Well, it's a very exciting time for NASA and for space exploration, the whole U.S. space program. I want to introduce Chris Colbert. He's the manager of the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative with NASA. And I want to talk to you about what's going to happen this afternoon on the lunar surface or what we hope to happen. So um, today should be the first, you know, if everything goes well, will be our first chance for the United States to land on the moon in more than 50 years. A small company called Intuitive Machines built their own lander. They're carrying some of our science instruments, and we hope they will land later this afternoon on the moon for the first time. It's incredible to think about this. It's been over 50 years since the United States has had uh, lunar landing. And, you know, China's gone up. I know the Soviet Union formerly and India more recently. Why do you think, why has it been so long for the U.S.? And why is this such an exciting time to get back to the moon now? Well, first and foremost, it's just hard. Uh, yeah. Space travel in general is difficult. The um, United States spent a number of years focusing on other things, but we're getting much closer to going back to the moon. We have the Artemis program, which is focusing on getting humans to the moon in the not-too-far future. So the CLIFS initiative is helping us establish the framework and learn things before we take humans back. These are smaller landers focusing more on science and technology to help us learn about the moon in preparation for the Artemis missions to come. It's incredible to think about the massive amount of people and all of the money that was spent in developing, you know, all of our technology in the initial space race, you know, 50 plus years ago. Uh, how have things changed? I mean, a lot of those folks obviously have retired or have passed some of that knowledge. We've kind of had to take a look at things differently. Yeah, uh, technology, of course, is the biggest change, right? We have vastly different technology data than was available in the Apollo program. And money is different. They had a lot of money back in the Apollo days. These companies are completing missions to the moon in the range of $100 million, a fraction of what we spent uh, back in the Apollo era. But we're taking advantage of modern technology, the capabilities that have been built up over many years. A lot of the infrastructure, both in low Earth orbit and, and in the launch industry, allows us to do things that the Apollo missions required a huge uh, infrastructure to support. Now we can do it at a much lower cost and hopefully at a much higher frequency. Let's talk a little bit about the strategy with today's landing. Now, this lander, lander is expected to touch down somewhere around the South Pole. What's the advantage to going to that part of the moon? What's the interest in that? So the South Pole is very important because of the potential for finding water. Uh, when you take humans somewhere, water is one of the most critical resources to have. Um, and on the moon, you're not going to find water in the places where the, the sun blasts all the time. But at the poles, there are regions in the poles where you, you won't get sunlight quite as much, maybe what they call permanently shadow regions where you might not see sunlight at all. And in those environments, we've gathered data over the last 20 years that suggests there might be water buried in the soil or found in the soil. So we're taking missions to the South Pole to help us give an opportunity to see if we can find water that will facilitate future human exploration. Very, very cool. Uh, I know there are a number of experiments that are going down now. What is the hope for the future? How is this going to help us spring forward with Artemis and, and potential human exploration again of the moon? Sure. So two important characteristics. One, these early missions will take science instruments that just help us learn more about the environment and understand how to prepare future capabilities so that humans can live and work there effectively. But beyond that, we're trying to establish a commercial infrastructure uh, that can support not just NASA missions, but create opportunities for commercial entities to go to the moon as well. That bigger pool of opportunity creates more things that we can do and a broader set of resources available to support human habitation. I've heard this term lunar economy, but I really don't know what that is. Maybe some of our viewers are wondering as well, how does this all tie together? What is lunar economy? So. You know, in the past, and pretty much everybody who's gone to the moon to date have done so as a government program, funded entirely by government dollars without any return on investment other than what the country learned. What we're trying to do is give commercial companies an opportunity to spend their own resources with NASA paying a portion of the bill, but they're also raising money from other commercial entities who want to take things to the moon. That's the beginnings of an economy where commercial services are bought and paid for without the government having to spend its own resources. That broadens the pool of opportunity at the moon, creates more infrastructure, and in the long term means you can do things in the moon without the government footing the bill for everything. You know, I've often thought lunar exploration or just space exploration, it's the one thing that brings the entire planet together. You know, it's a unified mission to see what is beyond our own planet here. 
I know there have been some political tensions, you know, worldwide at different times, but is there still some sharing of information and technologies within the scientific community when you see, you know, India, China, uh, the former Soviet Union, you know, the U.S. all doing this? Is there opportunities or do you think there will be opportunities to continue to share information? I think there will be opportunities. The science community has a long tradition of sharing a lot of information um, about what happens in space, not just at the moon, but in a variety of environments. There are a number of international cooperation groups that share data, that pass information around. That doesn't mean there won't be um, proprietary elements associated with these commercial companies, uh, but the science community does have a long tradition of sharing information. All right, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot here a little bit, but I'm excited to know what's your vision for lunar exploration and where we go in the next, say, decade or two decades? How excited are you and where do you think we can go with this? Uh, well, you know, I spent 40 years at NASA. This is what a lot of my career has been about, getting the opportunity to take things to the moon and, and establish a longer term infrastructure. So what I think we're going to see with the Artemis program leading the way and getting us ready is is permanent human habitation on the moon, maybe not right around the corner, but in the not too far future, similar to what we've seen in, in low Earth orbit. We built up the capability and we now have long sustained presence of humans there. I think that's what you'll see on the moon in the not too far future. And this, just to you know, make sure everyone's aware, landing a lander on the moon, on the lunar surface, this is a very risky thing. Still, even with all this technology, you know, the odds of a successful landing, what are we looking at this afternoon? I mean, fingers are crossed, but what do you think? It's hard. It's very, very hard. Um, you know, there have been more unsuccessful attempts at landing the moon, successful attempts to date. Um, nobody has landed the first robotic lander the first time without a failure. Intuitive Machines is hoping to accomplish that this afternoon, but if they do, it'll be a first. Um, any, any small mistakes can do a mission. Um, we, we're very impressed with everything they've done. They've, they've troubleshot a lot of small things, but their lander looks to be very healthy. I think they've got an excellent chance, but it's certainly nothing guaranteed. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. All right, so where can folks see this? I know there's going to be some live streaming. How can folks see what's going on, and how can we see U.S. images from the lunar surface? Okay, so um, Intuitive Machines has already released some of the pictures from lunar orbit on their website. Um, but you can also go to NASA Plus. We'll be broadcasting the landing live. There won't be cameras on the surface of the moon. You won't be able to see it land. But we'll be seeing the Intuitive Machines talking about it and giving us updates. Um, so at NASA Plus or go to nasa.gov slash NASA TV. Both of those will take you to a lot of information both about this mission and lots of other future plans for going to the moon. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with the mission this afternoon. We're all going to be watching closely and uh, just wishing for all the best. Go NASA. Go NASA. Thank you very much.